What's up, everybody? It's Ryan Donnelly from RyanD.com. Check out CalmSupport.com for stress, relaxation, immune, and sleep support. Products also available on Amazon. And RyanD.com for free addiction coaching powered by donations. In today's video, I'm going to talk about temptations, triggers, and give you a little bit of advice on how you can lessen this as a, a problem in early recovery, especially after withdrawals and you're trying to figure out what your next step is. Um, <clears throat> it's important to like really think about the fact that you've been living a lifestyle for so long that you're accustomed to doing whatever you need to do to stay not sick or, or get high, whatever. Um, but also you have to be aware of who you communicate with. Who you were communicating with that whole time you were using are the people you don't want to talk to. So the problem in this day and age is social media, um, cell phones, and it is so important. It's paramount that you get rid of the cell phone number you have. Start over, get a new one. And on social media like Facebook, um, Instagram, things like that, Twitter, it's very important to, you may not have to delete the account you have, but you need to run through and delete people that you know are not going to be good for you. It may be very hard. You may have like a history with these people even before use, but if they're still actively using, it's not healthy for you to see their posts or even give them the ability to reach out to you and say like, Hey, what's going on? I got this and that. You don't even want to have that as an option. So <clears throat> go through your friends list and you know, delete what you have to block if you have to. And, um, if you can, just stay off social media. Um, it, it's best because, you know, during the time of change and, you know, starting over, you don't really know who you are as a person. So you need to fill your time with positive things that can pretty much show you what path you need to go on. And one of the main things that leads to relapse is triggers, and that's people, places, and things. So it could be a place that you used to pick up drugs, uh, people you used to hang out with that did drugs, and um, just, you know, rituals or things that, you know, remind you of using. Uh, your best bet is to just try to avoid all three of those things. Now it's gonna be hard. Um, most people can't just pack up and leave the town they live in. Um, so the places are gonna be there. Do you have to go to those places? Probably not, unless it's your work, which is a problem, because then you might want to look for a different employment. I know that is a lot easier said than done, but if drugs are being used at your job and those people that you used to associate with are still there, that's an issue. That could be a, a, a huge downfall for uh, your recovery. But um, people, places, the, the people you can pretty much do your best to avoid and you know work on yourself if it's family that's going to be tough if you live in the same home that's going to be even harder uh, my recommendation is to leave but not everybody can just pack up and move somewhere else all right um, <clears throat> these these things triggers and you know figure out who you are are going to be probably the strongest part of your foundation all right, so if you can avoid triggers and you know you can actually figure out what your triggers are, uh, that is gonna be huge. It's gonna empower you. Uh, quick story about me. Um, when I got home from Salvation Army, I went and lived with my father in a t about two towns over from where you know I was turning and burning, so I did not wanna go back there. Um, there were legal charges pending and I didn't know what the situation was, no one, really reached out to me and I was afraid to reach out to them because I didn't know if I called, you know, next thing I know I'd be in jail. So <clears throat> being away, even though it was two towns over, I had the ability to um, pretty much work on myself, not worry about going out and running into people at say like a corner store or anything like that. And it was huge for me because it was like, I knew if I went back to Tom's River and I was walking around, say I went to the mall or Target or Walmart, whatever, and I ran into somebody, immediately I would have a problem. 
you know, you know, you get the hot and cold sweats, you start freaking out, uh, and I didn't want any part of that. So, luckily, my father took me in, and I lived with him for a good amount of time. I worked for him, and it gave me the ability to get stronger. And when I did feel stronger, I went into Tom's River for the first time in, I want to say it was like four or five months, and I went to Home Depot because my dad he uh, flips homes. <clears throat> we went there. And immediately when we pulled into uh, the parking lot, I started getting sweaty because that was one of the main places I would go to pick up. And um, I went into the store with him. I explained to him how I felt. And he was like, you know, talking me through it because he, he understands. And um, after we left, I felt strong because like it wasn't like I felt like I needed like to use or anything. It was just, wow, it brought back feelings that I, didn't, I hadn't felt felt in a while and um, it was empowering to leave and, and figure out that you know maybe I can keep taking small baby steps and going back into that town and that's what I did um, probably didn't go back for like another two weeks but after a while it became you know more frequent and I got stronger so <clears throat> just be very aware of triggers because those are usually the downfall for people and when you're new to recovery you're not going to be doing the same things you've been doing for a long time so it may be you know confusing trying to figure out who you are what you're going to do with your time and do not let yourself get bored because getting bored is one of the reasons why people go back to using um, and it's so simple it's like you can go out to starbucks or you know sit on your your laptop not on social media but you know like maybe do some journaling and try to do positive things that you can get outside and and be present not cooped up in your house all day and playing why me all right um, that's why meetings are so big people love going to meetings in the beginning because they get to meet people that are in the same situation as them or were in that situation and they're like-minded people and they do things that you know do not involve alcohol and drugs to have fun so um, it's a good group of people to cling on to and learn. Maybe you don't have to go out with them, but when you hear them speaking about what they do for fun, you can try doing those things. All right, um, that's it for today. Check out calmsupport.com for stress, relaxation, immune and sleep support. Products also available on Amazon and ryand.com for free addiction coaching powered by donations. I'll see you guys tomorrow.